Hi guys, so today we're going to be doing, well we're going to be showing you a couple of ways that you can test the CAN bus network. Um, the first test that we'll be doing with, will be with a multimeter, which we'll be able to use to test what voltage we've got. Uh, CAN high and CAN low should really have 2.5, 2.3 roughly. Um, so that's the first test we can do with the multimeter. The second test that we can do with the multimeter is a resistance check. So we can actually do that at the OBD connector, which is down there. So that can be easily achieved there. What you should be looking for um, resistance wise at the OBD connector or at any point in the CAN bus network, as long as you've got it all intact, um, you should be looking at 60 ohms um, of resistance. Now, what that means is you've got two 120 ohms uh, resistors um, and the potential difference of that once you check it with your meter is actually 60 ohms. So for instance, if you were to have a resistor down or um, you know, a, a main um, ECU unplugged which holds one of those uh, terminating resistors then you will only see 120 ohms so right now we've got the ignition on and we're going to we've got our multimeter probe right now we've got it in can low I believe um, what we'll do is we'll connect our other probe oh, into the chassis, uh, the, sorry, into the ground of the OBD connector. As you can see, we've got it connected there. And what we have on the multimeter is 2.3, so that is indeed can low. So that is a good voltage, that is right at the OBD connector. Um, obviously, if you were having issues with a certain module um, that isn't connecting to your scan tool, for instance, or the vehicle's a non-start, non-runner, whatever, um, you would be, you'd ideally test this directly at the connector of that ECU. Um, but this is just basically what you should look out for uh, if you ever run into any troubles. So what we'll do now is we'll switch it over to can high. Now I should really have a breakout box for this, but I just haven't got one. Um, so if we switch that over to can high. So we've got it switched over to can high and as we can see on the multimeter we've got 2.6 which is about right. So 2.6 volts on can high. So we've set a meter to 200 ohms. And what I can do, or what I will do, is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one-handed. Let's get the light in there. So, if we focus, so if we connect two probes, one on can high, one on can low. Now, you will you will need the ignition off because you can't measure resistance with the ignition on. But there we go. So we've got run about 60, 62 ohms of resistance, which is an ideal figure. Now, I was going to show you a 
a clip on the bench of a field. So basically if there was an open circuit in the line. So I've unplugged that control unit. As you can see, 120 ohms. Right, so we've got the scope not set up completely, but I'll show you that in a minute. So we've got the leads connected, um, can high, can low. Can high is on channel one, can low is on channel two. Um, we're using, right now we're using pin four on the DLC connector, which is a ground. So if we go back to the scope, now I'm quite lucky to have the automotive one, so it's easy enough just to select can high, can low, turn that off. Um, now what I like to do with these is we can sort the trigger, you know, a bit better, but far too quick. We can always pause it and go back ever so slightly and you can see that we've got a really good mirror image which is what we need on a CAN bus network with no dropouts it's consistent it looks really good but what also I like to do is change the time scale to one second per division we can run the scope it'll be a lot slower but it will capture a good image and then we can zoom in so if we stop it in time which we have done so if we zoom in yep so if we zoom in scroll along if we have a look at that we've got a nice can bus waveform now the main thing to look out for on these is make sure you have no dropouts. I can show you a picture of a Land Rover that I've done um, and you can see the difference. It was just a, a complete different picture um, that had actually lost communication to the engine control module. I can show you that picture right now. But if, back to this waveform. If you keep scrolling along, there is no difference. It is a nice, clear, nice, clear image. You know, what you can do is you can flick, I'll show you that. You can flick the bottom page up there and that will save a capture. So if you go to your home button, go to photos and you can see that capture right there. So that just saves an image for you for, you know, for whatever reason that you need. But yeah, that's really, it's a few different ways to test, um, professional or non-professional. You can easily test it with a digital multimeter. But like I said, if you've got any major issues, um, an oscilloscope is definitely the way to go. So I'm going to wrap this video up. I uh, hope you found it useful. Um, if you can, like and subscribe. And I'll see you later.